you have a favorite shadow or liner or eye cream that you've been using as your go-to for months or even years, and then all of a sudden you start to develop swollen, red, puffy, scaly eyes? Is it an allergic reaction to your product or is it something else? Today we're gonna to be talking about allergic reactions around your eyes because that is exactly what happened to me when I tried something new and I should know better. I'm an ophthalmologist. So if you're interested in learning more, stick around. So right now I have no makeup on, which is, it's a little bit hard to be on camera and to be looking at myself, but I don't have anything on because I wanted you to be able to see the kind of reaction that I had when I started a product. See how dark it is right underneath? And I'm Indian and I naturally have a little bit of darker under circles, but this is actually more than I normally have. This is from the dark patches because I started to have an allergic dermatitis reaction to a skincare product. And I think you're gonna be surprised to find out what product it was. Eczema typically happens in babies or children and it's an immune reaction to something you've been exposed to chronically. So really what I had is something more like allergic dermatitis. And the thing is you can have allergic dermatitis to a product you have been using for years. It doesn't have to necessarily be something that's new. And in my case, however, I do think it was new but I should have known better for a couple of reasons. First, my skin is very, very sensitive. I have very dry, sensitive skin. So I've always usually been super careful. So when I say that, I mean, read the ingredients and always introduce new products one at a time. But I didn't do that this time. I thought that the two products that I was using were gonna be super safe and I wasn't gonna have a reaction. And then I did have a reaction and I couldn't figure out which one it was. So that's why, if you know that you have skin that's a little bit on the more sensitive side and you can have this kind of atopic dermatitis, which tends to happen in people like me who have allergies like hay fever, who have asthma, which I don't have thankfully, but it goes with this kind of atopic or allergic type of person, that's me, um, and your body's just like all revved up and the immune cells are always like blasting. So we develop allergic dermatitis much more quickly than people that don't. So you can kind of, you can still even see it now that it's bright, just very, very dark. And it's like a patch. My skin feels like sandpaper. It literally was peeling off and it started here underneath the eyes. So the two products that I had started using, can I just put on some makeup first because I feel really weird. Much better. All right, so now that I've done my face, let's get back to the allergic dermatitis. Cosmetics or skincare products can irritate the skin directly or they can cause an immune reaction, which happens later. So that's kind of the two different types of allergic reactions that you can get. And the reason that the eyes are a little bit more special is that the eyelid skin is the thinnest skin in your body. So it really shows very quickly when you're allergic to something, even if you've applied it to the entire rest of your face. So if it's a contact dermatitis, you're gonna apply your product, your skincare, or your makeup, and you're gonna get a reaction pretty immediately, all the way, you know, within an hour, basically. You're gonna get redness, you're gonna get swelling, you can even get little welts, hives, those kind of things. Um, and they're gonna happen pretty quickly. And as soon as you stop using the product, they're going to disappear within about 24 hours. That's the norm. 80% of all cases of allergic dermatitis from makeup or skincare is from contact. Like you're just allergic to something that's being put on your skin. And it can take weeks of continued exposure. So I could be using this eye gel for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then on the 200th time that I'm using it, my body flares up. That can happen. And again, happens more individuals that have that kind of immune system that's boosted. So allergic dermatitis, you're sensitized to the allergen and you develop a reaction 12 to 48 hours after you put it on. So that's where it can be tricky to figure out what you're allergic to. So in my case, I did something I told everybody not to do, I tell my patients not to do, is starting a couple different products at the same time. So I started micellar water. I figured it's water. It's should be easy, but I've never used a micellar water before. I used, I bought the CeraVe one because I like CeraVe for moisturizing lotions. I think it's so, so good. 
So I figured that it wouldn't be a problem. And I didn't have my glasses on, so I wasn't reading this, which is the ingredients. And once I did, I realized that it actually has alcohol in it, which is, of course, really, really drying. And for my skin, I can't take it. It really dries my skin out way more because of my allergy type personality and my dry skin, as well as my sensitivities. So I should have known better with this, but I just thought it was safe. At the same time, however, I started a new eye gel. I started an Elta MD eye gel, which, you know, Elta MD, it's physicians. You can buy it in doctor's offices. I sell it in my office. I love their sunscreen. Everyone was raving about this new eye gel. So I started them both at the same time. And here's the thing. I thought it was the eye gel at first because... I started getting these super scaly patches right underneath my eyes. And I assumed, well, that's where I was putting the eye gel. It's got to be the eye gel. I had forgotten that I had also started the micellar water at the same time. And your eyes are going to be hit first because the skin is so sensitive and it's the most frequent area of allergic dermatitis. So as the um, couple days went by, then I realized I actually was flaking and peeling all over my face and not just right here. It just was worse right here. So that's when I realized it was in my cellar water. So for me, that's what caused me to have a reaction. Anybody can have a reaction to anything. It's, I'm not saying you shouldn't use that, the my cellar water. If you love it, go for it. And I think that company is a great company. I like it a lot, but it, I just had an issue with it for me personally. So what should you do? if you develop any kind of allergic reaction, if you've got the redness, the itching, the swelling, you can even get, just like I did, the darkened patches, the scaling, the dryness. What do you do? First, obviously, stop whatever it is. So I stopped all of my products. I only was using my sunscreen when I was leaving the house. I didn't put anything else on my face, which was so hard to see patients with. I put like lipstick on, of course, and I have my lashes. So, you know, I felt okay. But you want to stop everything because you want to kind of give your skin a little bit of a detox time. And then moisturize, really, really moisturize because it's so, so dry your skin. If moisturizing is not enough, then typically we can go to a steroid ointment. Now, a dermatologist is going to use slightly different steroids than an ophthalmologist does. I tend to use really low dose steroid ointments and I like steroid ointments that are safe in the eye. So I will only prescribe things like FML 0.1%, which is fluoromethylone or low to max ointment. They're kind of hard to get, but I also know that if any of it gets into your eye, that it's safe. Dermatologists will tend to use 1% hydrocortisone or they might use triamcinolone. I don't love those around the eye area. So if it was just around here, go for it. Or you could use um, Protopic as well, which is another. That one actually has some off-label uses in the eye. But um, you want to be careful just because you go to the drugstore and you get your 1% hydrocortisone. Be careful about putting it if you've got, especially on the top of the eyelid skin, right underneath your eyelid skin. Steroids thin the skin. And since your eyelid skin is already the thinnest skin in your body, you don't want to be using it excessively. So we really want to first remove the offending agent, number two, moisturize, number three, use steroids as a last resort. So I actually had this for a week and I really thought I was going to have to get a doctor to call in a prescription for me and uh, for a steroid, but it really just started to get so much better in the last day. So sometimes you just have to wait it out, but just continue with keeping your skin really clean, but not overly clean. Don't try to like do a lot of stuff with, with alcohol and toning and just really very, very simple. I just use Cetaphil cleanser. I wasn't even using a washcloth to remove my makeup. So just very, very simple makeup regimen and then using a lot of moisturizer right after I got out of the shower in the morning and just using it twice a day, at least sometimes even three times a day to really keep my skin hydrated. And that seemed to do the trick. So what things can we be allergic to? So like I was, propylene glycol. This has ethylene glycol, same kind of thing. So propylene glycol, fragrances, preservatives, lanolin. Eyeshadows tend to have nickel and cobalt. So there are a lot of eyeshadows that you can be allergic to. So always look at the ingredients to see first, especially if you have sensitive skin or that history of ATP. Don't think just because it says organic or natural, that it's super safe for you to use on your skin if you ha are prone to having reactions. 
it really doesn't mean anything. I hate to say it, but it really doesn't. Even when you have um, pure hypoallergenic, those words, you know, there's they don't really mean that much. Fragrance-free is always good because you don't want extra fragrances. They tend to cause a lot of reactions, as I was saying. So you can look for that word. But honestly, I would just look at the ingredients. Don't go by all those buzzwords that they're trying to sell you. Look at the ingredients and just be mindful that reactions, even on stuff that you put all over your face, can manifest first around your eyes. And you want to just detox your skin to figure out what it is. Hopefully that was helpful, you guys could learn from my suffering. I'm better, but I can, ugh, that little bit of darkness really still bothers me, but it's gonna get better. Um, so learn from my mistakes. Don't start two products at one time, especially with skin creams and skincare. Be mindful because I wasn't, and I don't know why I wasn't. I really don't. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I am Dr. Rupa. Please subscribe, hit the bell notification, check out some of my other videos below. I'd love to, see you on my channel and uh, please comment below if you want other kinds of content. If you want a list of eye makeup that I think is safe to use, eyeliner, shadows, any of those kind of things. If you're interested, please comment below and I'd be happy to provide. All right, until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa.